Our scripture this week comes from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, chapter 4, verses 25 to chapter 5, verse 2. Listen to the word of God. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from all your bitterness and wraths and angers and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God and Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. In the past couple of weeks, I'm sure many of us have been watching the actions of the Olympic Games that's taking place halfway around the world. Even under these extraordinary circumstances, having been delayed by, the, by a year due to the pandemic, the spirit of sportsmanship and friendly competition puts aside our geopolitical, cultural differences and propels us to see our place in a more unifying global community. Of the 206 participating countries and regions around the world, amazingly, approximately 120 of them receive some kind of medals. So they're not all going home empty-handed, but they are all winners. All the athletes, whether they win a medal or not, they are all winners. Many of them also took the podium stands for their country for the very first time. This is what I appreciate the most about this special global event that take place once every four years. It is not about who wins or who loses or any athlete's personal accomplishments, but it is about building up relationship, camaraderies with one another on a global scale. Don't we need that now more than ever? And because of the pandemic, we realize that we are all more closely connected with one another than ever before. Furthermore, in addition to what takes place on the field, I also enjoy reading many of the personal human stories of triumphs, struggles, and trials. We hear stories behind these athletes, regardless of whether they win or lose. They brought their human stories to life. They told their stories and share them with others, they share it with us. The more we read about the, their stories, the more we come to realize that they are more, they are not much different than we are. They share similar human struggles, emotions and pains in overcoming various life trials and circumstances, life trials and challenges, and even more than what we experience sometimes. 
over the past couple of weeks, we have seen many human emotion and drama being played out both on and off the field. One of these friendly, one of these rival, friendly rivalries was in the high jump competition between the reigning world champion Essa Basham of Qatar and Giomarco Tamberi of Italy. Both of them have known and competed against each other for years. On the field, they may be competitors, but off the fields, off the field, they have developed a special mutual admiration, respect, and friendship with one another. Both of them have also recently suffered potentially career-ending injuries and were doubtful about the chance of competing against each other in the Olympic, but they both made it. And because of the pandemic, because of the pandemic, they were able to heal themselves well enough from their injuries and to compete against one another and are competing along with one another as well. As expected, their on-field competition was neck to neck and ended up coming down to the wire. At the end, they both ended up being tied for first at the 2.37 meter lock. Now as a tiebreaker, they could elect to go for a tiebreaker jump, a jump off, so that one must win and the other one was settled for the silver. But both athletes felt that this competition was more than who wins and who loses. They both agree that they are winners and they chose to share the gold medals together. They will share the same platform. So it's a win-win situation in keeping the Olympic dream and hope alive, not only for themselves individually, but also for their respective country that they represent. What a wonderful demonstration of human triumphs and mutual gratifications and honoring of one another, both on and off the field. Life is more than who wins and who loses. It is about building each other up, sustaining the dream and hope of one another. It is about keeping the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, even when we have to share what we have, yearn for so with others. In the same way, through Paul's letter to the early church, and in our gospel lessons that we've been reading over the past couple of weeks, we've been reminded of the importance of maintaining that spirit of unity or oneness in the midst of our diversity and differences. The miraculous feeding of the 5,000 plus offer us a glimpse of what the kingdom of God may look like only if we take a step back and share a little bit of what we have with others. We can all afford to carry out our individual parts, yielding our own personal privileges for the greater purpose of our community. It's not about me or what I get out of it, but it's about us what we may collectively gain as a whole. In our text this morning, the Apostle Paul focuses our attention on our relationship with one another. How can we get along with one another in the midst of our differences? In the spirit of competition, how can we still be friends? Can we seek a win-win instead of a win-lose situation. Just like those Olympic high jumpers did in resolving some of their differences. 
This is of particular relevant issues that reminds us of today, especially in the context of the community of faith in which Christ is the head of the body. Christ is the one who unites us all because of, because of our common ground. We must strive to reach mutual understanding, to complement and supplement one another in life. As Paul referred to the early church in Corinth, saying, for just as the body is one and has many members, and for all the members of the body, and all the members of the body, though many are one body. And so it is with Christ. Paul reminds us that we must speak the truth to our neighbors in love and recognize that we are all members of one global community. We all live in the same global village. Our personal action or inactions have a direct impact upon the others. Just like the symbol of the Olympic games reminded us that we are all interlocking together across all continents of the world. Together, we are all independent. We are interdependent and inseparable of the greater good of the community. We cannot do it all on our own. We need the spirit of cooperation of one another in order to become something greater than ourselves. So how do we do that? In order to do that, we must establish a vibrant and nurturing community that is built upon mutual trust and respect. As Paul wrote, as Paul wrote in the text this morning, let no evil talk comes out of our mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that our words may give grace to those who hear. Our words matter. Our actions matter. Therefore, in every word we say, every action that we take, we ought to think of the consequences that others may bear and not just our own interests, not just of our own interests and desires. Paul also reminded us that we need to be authentic and be genuine with one another. It is okay to show our emotion constructively, but do not sin against our neighbors. We confess that we are not perfect. Nevertheless, God still accepts us for who we are, no less. It helps us to realize how much more we are dependent upon God and one another. It is important that we seek an open and honest relationship. We value authenticity and honesty rather than falsehood, trickery, or deception. Or when we place our self-interest first above others. This is not the type of community that God has intended for us. This was surely easier said than done in an ever more competitive world that we live in these days. Whether on the athletic field or in the corporate world, oftentimes people ought to do would do whatever they can in order to get themselves an edge over the others. Their competitiveness has overwritten their morality and ethics. And as we've seen in the Olympic games and in other professional sports, athletes from various countries and have been sanctioned and for violations for substance abuse. They just wanna be a little 
edge, have a little edge above the others. God wants us to be honest with our emotions. It is okay that we show our fears, our weakness, and even our anger towards one another. But Paul reminds us that we must do so in a constructive manner. When we expose our vulnerability, we seek, we seek our dependence upon God for strength, encouragement, and support. We build each other up through our own brokenness and form a more perfect union body. Furthermore, God has called us to be the reconcilers of peace. As Paul suggested that we are to lay aside our bitterness and wraths and angers and wrangling and slander together with all matters and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. We are to be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love and harmony with one another. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. To be imitators does not mean that we are to be considered as equal to God. No one else can except Christ. But when we imitate God, in essence, we become a reflector of who God is by our actions, by our thoughts and by our words. Other may see us, other may see God through our actions, our thoughts and our actions and our words. Just like any athlete to put on their country's uniform, they no longer represent themselves individually, but they represent the country through their performance, both on and of the field. When we imitate God, we demonstrate the characteristics of God by following the honoring, by following and honoring Christ's teaching. In the New Living Translation, it is translated as instead of being imitators of God, we are to follow God's example in everything that we do. So are we following God's example? Are we honoring and upholding God's standards through our everyday living? When others see us, do they see us as reflector, as imitator of who God truly is? This is a call for our personal reflections of behavior. It is not enough that we say we follow Christ or if we've been a member of a, of a church for X number of years, it brings no honor to God if we, our speech or if our conducts lead to harms towards others and bring disunity to the body of Christ. So to recap, through our text this morning, we are to live in community with one another and as imitators of God and followers of Christ. These are keys in upholding the unity of the body in, in spite of any differences, tensions, rivalry and competitions that we may have against each other. We are to reject falsehood Speak truthfully to our neighbors. Do not withhold anger or grudges against them. Do not steal and do good and share what we have with those in need. Be vigilant with our lips 
be careful what you say. In making sure that what we say are for the upbuilding of one another. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, slanders and any form of malice. Be kind and have compassion towards one another. Forgive each other as Christ has forgiven you. These are the golden virtues that how of how we ought to live as community with one another, in spite of our differences. May we continue to seek God first in all that we do, through our words, our thoughts, and our deeds. Seek first his righteousness in the kingdom of God for the greater needs of the community rather than those of our own. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen.